Hello, my name is Matthew Randall and welcome to this, the first tutorial on uh, mapping, UV mapping. Um, so in, these, in this series of tutorials, what we're going to do is look at applying textures within Maya to sort of more complex surfaces. Um, and we'll be looking at uh, more of the sort of uh, UV mapping tools that are built into Maya. Uh, what I've done is create a Maya project for you to use to follow along uh, along with uh, with this tutorial um, and you can download that and, and open that up. Um, I'll just show you the project here. Um, okay, it is this file here. Let's have a look. Um, so, let's have a look. Just find myself. So the project file is here and inside here we've got a scene with a digger in it. OK, and that's what we're going to be texturing. Uh, I won't, we won't texture the entire scene because uh, that would be uh, many hours worth of video. Uh, we'll just texture one element of it to give you a sort of starting point uh, and then you can continue texturing it yourselves. Uh, and then within the source images, we've got our actual texture files that we're going to use. And you'll see us use those as we go through the tutorial. Uh, I've already, within Maya, actually just gone set project and set it to this folder. But I'll do it again so you can see me do it. And then I'm just going to open up that digger file. Uh, the digger file, if you're interested, was actually, oh, th there'll just be some warnings here because we have actually, uh, I think we, uh, there's just some uh, issues with it, uh, extra files that were supposed to be downloaded with it that I didn't download, uh, but we don't need those. Okay, so we just close that and we've got our digger. Uh, I actually downloaded the digger from uh, TurboSquid, which you can sign up to and download objects uh, that you can use for free. Uh, obviously, just be aware of any licensing issues relating to these if you're using it on any VFX projects that you're planning to put into your uh, in, into film festivals etc. Back into Maya then what you'll see is uh, this model's actually been rigged and animated so you can see we can actually play that as well okay and it gives you it gives you an idea of sort of model that we might get from a modeler uh, that we need to texture okay now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the bucket uh, and uh, texture this bucket uh, uh, part of the model here. Now we could just uh, have this as a sort of nicely painted yellow uh, and we could probably just use the built-in uh, shaders within Maya to achieve that rather than having to actually use any texture files. However, I want this to have a used feel, you know, I want it to have scratches and look, uh, look used. So we need to apply textures in order to do that. And often, you know, often when we're doing projects, we want things to look kind of worn and tatty, give it a more realistic feel. OK, first thing we need to do then is actually try and separate this bucket off from the rest of the model. So I'm just going to move this to the first frame. OK, uh, and then I'm going to separate this from the rest of the model. So uh, uh, for those that haven't done any animation, this here is your effectively your timeline here. And we can just uh, move that to wherever we want. We'll just stick with the first frame for the purposes of this tutorial. And here are your sort of transport controls, i.e. for playing the animation. OK. Um, what you'll see is when we select this, it selects the entire model. Um, uh, what we actually want to try and do is separate this bit away from it. Uh, what I found is if I go into, if I go right click and go UV shell, uh, what you'll find is this model's actually been separated already into separate UV shells that we can use. Um, and you'll see that the bucket's kind of made up of different elements. If I sort of zoom in here, you can see we've got, uh, there's a left and right of the main bucket element, and then you've got this sort of uh, ridges along here. I'm not really sure why those have been added. It doesn't seem like a particularly necessary element. And then the teeth in the middle here are also sort of separate as well. Um, I'm just going to focus on this, the main bucket, okay? So I'm just going to go, uh, so if you haven't got this mode already, just go right click UV, UV shells. That just means that you're selecting based on uh, separate UV shells. And I'll explain what those are in a moment. OK, but first of all, I want you to go and select the two main sides of the bucket just by pressing shift. OK, then what I want you to do is we want to separate this off from the main model. So what we want to do is take this selection and just go mesh uh, separate. OK, and that now will have separated this uh, part of the model. I can now select this separately from the rest of the model. OK, um, now what I want to do is I just want to go control. I don't really want to remove this from the digger. I just want to go control D, OK, uh, to duplicate it. Uh, and then I'm just going to use the transport controls to kind of move this away. OK, so that's fabulous. OK. 
So one of the key things what we, that we need to do is really kind of separate our model down into its individual components to make it easier to actually uh, apply the textures to. Uh, another thing we can also do is um, where you've got uh, items like this which are symmetrical, um, rather than having to actually unfold both sides of this, we could just unfold one side of it. Okay. So what I might do is just go into uh, face mode and I'm just going to select one side of this uh, model and just delete all those faces. So now what I've got to do is UV texture, okay, or unfold half this model. Uh, what I might want to do is once I've unfolded it, generate the other half of the model so that I can apply slightly different textures to each side of the model. It'll make it look a bit more authentic rather than having a sort of weird mirrored look to it. But in terms of actually unfolding the texture, um, uh, uh, having it in half is fine. Okay, so that gives us a nice starting point. The other thing I want to do is I, I don't really want to see the rest of this digger uh, as I'm trying to work on this. So what I might do is just put things onto a separate layer. Now, if you haven't used uh, layers before, they're here. If you can't see them, you should just be able to go Windows uh, Layer. I'm trying to think where they are. Uh, the Render Layer Editor is, uh, that's the Render Layer Editor that, that you've got there. Uh, yeah, click on that and that will come up there, okay? Uh, but actually what we're looking at is something called display layers. If you click this tab, it gives you the display layers here, okay? But if you can't see it, just go into Windows uh, Render Editor, Render Layer Editor, okay? Or I think, in fact, if you go to General Editors, you can go to Display Layer Editor there. So if I right click and go select all, this will select everything inside my scene. And what I can do is add that to a uh, display layer. So I'm going to go uh, and go on this button here, which will effectively add uh, everything I've selected to a new display layer. OK, and, if, and what you'll see is generating a new display layer. And there's a little V here. If I click on that V, it means that everything on that layer, it sort of disappears. OK, uh, next thing I can do is I can actually uh, select just that bucket and make and, and remove that. The only problem I've got at the moment is this bucket is part of the hierarchy of this uh, digger here. So I just need to separate that off. If I go into Windows Outliner, you will understand the problem. Let's try again. Windows Outliner. OK, you'll understand the problem. Um, so what you'll see is this uh, this uh, uh, part of the uh, digger bucket that we want to actually apply a texture to is actually a polygon surface that's inside this group. So what I want to do is just move this. I'm going, to, I'm going to middle click and just move this out of the group so it's actually you know not in a group at all. Okay. Then what I want to do is select that. Okay. So once I've done that, I'll be able to select that and then literally right click on the layer and go remove selected objects. What that means is everything but this bucket will now be on that layer. OK, so that now gives me a good position to sort of start. Uh, if I turn this layer off, I'm in a good position now to start uh, actually applying a UV map to uh, this model.